Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. I'm here to ask and answer one simple question. WTF is a vessel. Vessel is a fluid-based physics puzzle platformer thingy. That's exactly what it is. It's by a company called Strange Loop, and it consists primarily of XEA employees creating this indie game here. And it is based around the idea of water as kind of a living organism, which is rather interesting and a little bit difficult to explain without showing it to you. So why don't we just get right into it? Let's continue from here. As I've started to take to do in my WTF is, I skipped through what I thought was the tutorial, but the game really doesn't have one. It kind of just kicks in immediately. But some of the functionality that I saw in, say, the video trailer isn't available yet the ability to shoot water at various different things for various reasons but we can show it from here i think that seems to be fairly reasonable so what i'm going to do in this area is yes swing on this in order to get enough water into this machine to create what's called a fluoro so the basis of this game is that this guy i think invented technology which allowed you to create sentient beings out of fluids and they were used to do pretty much everything they were used in industry basically like robots only made of water and of course they could then be just discarded at will because they were water and they'd just go back to water when their job was done that's a fluoro right here as you can see and he's hopefully going to do something useful for me they like lights, for what I can tell. They really like lights. So what they will... Or maybe they hate lights one way or the other. Can't really work out which it is, but they will deliberately go out of their way to press a button to turn a light off. So that's a way of controlling their behavior. So in this case, for instance, I want to get through these doors. How am I going to do that? Well, if I convince Mr. Fluoro over here that his worst nemesis is that button then he's going to be able to ha hold that down and then I can get through the doors, as you can see. And I can also flip that other switch myself, so I don't really need his help there. And he's going to follow me along here. And he is required in order to get through these areas. So in this case, you can see there's this big-ass cogwheel up to the top. So first thing I want to do is try and bring my fluoro over in this direction. One of the best way to do it is turn this light on and then he'll get bothered by that, come over and say, what's all this racket? And then get all this sorted out. So I guess he can have a quick hop over in this direction. And as he goes past that, he will then push that. And for what I can tell, that's moving a cog down there, but it's not going to move it quite far enough. So I want to push it again. Probably the best way to do that would be to turn on this light so he jumps down there, then turn on this light so he goes up here, and then once again, turn on this light so he walks past it. A little contrived, one might say, but it is required at this stage. And that rolls that along even further, which will hopefully, I suppose, allow me to jump through here to another area. There we go, problem solved. So your character at the moment, he can just manipulate levers for the most part. That's not what I'd call a lever. That's that's actually a zipline. All right, that's a funny ass looking zipline. I've got to say, there's a interesting sort of steampunk style to this game, and some things look rather odd. I have to say, <laughs> there's a fluoro down there. I don't know if he's going to help me or not, but I guess he'll follow the light, maybe. No, well, certainly not at the moment. Anyway, so. We'll just continue to slide along here for whatever reason. This gives me an opportunity to talk about the character's controls that are fairly basic, but there's an awful lot more controls to learn as you go through the game. We can show you that right now, in fact, and that will give you an idea of what's available. You will have to use the mouse and the keyboard, or, of course, there are gamepad controls there as well. Apparently, you will get some kind of backpack, which seems to be sort of like Super Mario Sunshine style, I think. Now, what's going on here, I wonder? Okay. He's just gonna shut that off every time, but... Well, that's annoying. I'm gonna have to bring him off of that. Sadly, fluoros don't seem to be all that cooperative. It's funny, considering they're supposed to be these amazing workers. You can actually just break them, which I feel very sad for doing. <laughs> it's just like I just stamped on that guy. That's... That's really unpleasant. I feel g seriously guilty for that. There's a little bit earlier on in this, I suppose you could call it a tutorial, although I'm not really so sure if it is or not, where you could just land these spikes on top of one. It's like, it doesn't complain. It just, it seems a bit forlorn as it disappears into nothingness. And you know what? That depresses me horribly. I don't even know if that benefited me because now I'm up here and 
Oh, where do I go from here? Do I smash him about, or can I perhaps activate the, the light here? That is a good question. It is a puzzle game, which tends not to result in good things happening when I'm involved in them. But it's definitely an interesting brand of puzzle platformer, certainly. The character controls fairly well, although he's... I'd say that maybe the animations are a bit stilted, as you can probably see. Some of them are really good, like when he swings on this, for instance, that that's awesome. I mean, that looks really good, especially when he runs along the ground as well. That's some fantastic artwork right there. And indeed, the art assets that you're seeing in the game seem to be absolutely fantastic. But I do have some other concerns, like the fact that he kind of twitches around a little bit on ladders, for instance, and his jumping is a bit stilted. But these are minor, minor complaints because people tend to whine when I don't criticize. So... I will call it as I see it, in this case, that, you know, the animation quality is a mixed bag. You see, at this point, I'm probably just going to get end up getting stuck. Oh, apparently that kills you. Never mind, I probably should have guessed that. <laughs> it's like, ah, oh, jumping on spikes, that's unsensible, right? Uh, evidently not. All right, so we have to do the zipline thing once again. If I can get on the sodding thing, get over here. There we go. And try and figure out what's going on. This might end up being one of these WTF is videos where I get through about 10 minutes of the game then get completely stuck and have to do another take when I finally figure out what the balls is going on. You'll also notice that there's fluid coming from the side here. There is actually a purpose to this, although uh, you don't see all that many puzzles early on in the game which really require it. There's a couple where it's like redirect this flow to fill this up and so on and so forth, but fluid pay plays a crucial role in the game one way or the other. Oh, this guy's just sitting around here. I thought they hated light, but apparently they don't seem to, so th this guy doesn't care. I, I kicked him in the head! I didn't mean to, I'm so sorry. I feel really guilty whenever I do that. I probably shouldn't, because these aren't really sentient beings. They're just robots made of water, but I still feel horribly guilty for breaking one of them. And I have a feeling this game is going to force me to do a lot more of that, and that depresses that. Oh, I'm such an idiot. <laughs> it's like, was it really? Wow, okay, it was that easy? Alright. Well, I think, I guess I can just kick this guy in the head, which I really don't want to do. Sorry, buddy. I didn't mean it. I had to. The puzzle progression told me. That That is really depressing. I am very saddened by having to do that. G get over here. I've got to quickly get through here before he closes it. Oh, there we go. Okay, right. <laughs> Problem solved. I guess. So we can continue to move along in this direction on this crazy Victorian steampunk zipline. The aesthetics of the game are awesome, and I probably should talk about the music if you haven't already figured it out. It's pretty damn fantastic. It's a weird mix, really, of sort of piano stuff, some electronica, and a, a bit of Nine Inch Nails in there. Like, that, that's what it... It does have this Resina vibe to it. It's like all is not quite right, and I don't know how the plot of the game actually ends up going, but that's the vibe that I get from it. It's like you've got these super cute beings and a really nice cartoony style, but everything doesn't seem to be quite right in this universe, and it unsettles me somewhat. I like that. There's definitely a lot of work that's been put in here, and this team isn't very large either. From the impression that I got from the website, it's a four-man team, but I may be wrong there. God, there's these fluoros everywhere. I don't even know if I'm supposed to be doing anything with them. Hopefully not. I guess that's the end of the line. From a technical standpoint, I'd like to say this game has some weird funky stuff going on with it in the fact that you change the resolution and it just shrinks the actual game. It doesn't scale to your monitor. It might be something to do with a two monitor setup because I noticed I can actually move my mouse completely off the screen and it will go onto my other monitor, which is cool because games are kind of they should be doing that but the fact is they don't so i have a feeling that what appears to be the right thing to do is actually the wrong thing and maybe it's being affected in that respect also it's kind of unfortunate that your character just kind of snaps one way or the other when you move your mouse like that like i said animation quality is a mixed bag but it would have been nice if they'd just given it something i suppose that it makes means that you get more sort of responsiveness on your character but it doesn't look right it, especially on ladders it looks really weird on ladders as you can see so it's unfortunate they didn't tighten that up a little bit all right now this room just scares the hell out of me to begin with i think we're gonna need a fluoro to help us out the question is can i find the right container to do that. That's what the container is. That's the machine to make the fluoro. One of these, I think, might... Well... 
do something, I suppose. Your cursor actually changes when you go over that, but I haven't really figured out if you'd have to do anything. Uh, there is an F key, which for use, but that doesn't seem to really make a difference here. So that doesn't really matter all that much. I've got everyone screaming at me already on YouTube. I can see it happens. It's like, this is how you do it. <laughs> you're not the one playing, damn it. It's easier when you're the spectator. It's even easier if you're not utterly awful at puzzle games. I always wonder why it is that puzzle game makers ask me to have a look at their game. And in this case, the fluid guys did. So, like, why? <laughs> why did you ask me that? You know it's going to be bad. This is a lock system, isn't it? I see. This is like the... Those of you who don't want to know what a lock is, it's designed to allow water and boats to go uphill. It's the idea that you bring the water to a certain level and then you raise up a platform and then you go on again. It's kind of like a set of stairs, but for a river. So what I'm going to have to do here, one way or the other, is to open that, possibly fire some up maybe, and then I guess that's what I'm going to have to do. <laughs> I may be overthinking it which is a fairly consistent problem with me. But that, that changes really fast. I'm not even sure if I can do that. Maybe I'm skipping a stage here, because I'm pretty sure I know what I need to do, but I don't know in what order. So you hold that, the water comes up. So the water is, of course, useless at this stage. I can't get it into the machine from here, and it's just going to just flop around, so I can't turn it into a flu road to help me. So what I need to be able to do... It just, it seems even unlikely that I can hold down the switch for long enough, especially when it's that one. I mean, it only opens for a few seconds, so... Unless I'm missing something horrendously obvious. No, you can't get there in time, you just can't, so... Alright, I'm missing a stage here. Now I've just got to figure out what. What am I missing? What What is going wrong here that is causing this to happen? I can't use the machine because there's no water. There is actually, I'll make another complaint here, by the way, which it might seem fairly minor and it kind of is, but it's certainly kind of confusing to me here is that some of the background assets don't look quite distinct enough from the stuff that's in the foreground. So you can't necessarily work out what is necessary for your puzzle and what is not. But it is a very minor complaint and it's mostly due to my idiocy, I think, more so than anything else on the game design part. See, now I'm just horribly stuck. Because these close very, very quickly. That water supply isn't doing a damn thing. Did I miss something in this corridor? Can I... I can't bring a fluoro down with me either, because they, they just ref flat out refuse to follow me here. So I guess I didn't miss anything there. All right, you know what's going to have to happen. I'm going to have to pause the recording until I figure out how the hell you do this, and then I can progress with the game and show you more of it. Yes, it turns out I was an idiot, and this actually sort of comes into my complaint about foreground background. So you can actually hang on to this by holding the E key, and then you can spin it around to generate water, which will then go into the machine, which will then generate a fluoro, and that's what you do. So I was skipping a step. I knew what I had to do. I was just doing it in the wrong order. Uh, there you go. So if I then activate this, that should activate the machine, which will create a fluoro, which I will hopefully not accidentally kick in the head and cause the dire horrendous silent death. Am I overdoing things? Possibly. Ah, oh, that fluoro is still born. That's horrible. That's horrendous. Now what is he doing? All right. I need you to get to the right place. Looks like he's going to just step on all of the buttons one after another. So I don't need to do that just yet. No, no, don't go back there. That's no use. Ugh. Right, you, come on. Come over here. Maybe if I... All right, can I encourage him to come over in this direction? Possibly. He's just jumping up and down there. He's a, he's a little bit derp. All right, get up here. Come on. Come on. No. Just look. Look at this. Come, come on. Come to the button. Come to the button. <sighs> Useless damn bastard. Maybe you need two. That's a possibility. Perhaps I can make a second one. All right, let's give that a try. Spinning right around, baby. Right around. There we go. 
Okay, let's get a second one. You're useless. I'm gonna get another one. You shall be replaced. There we go. It's monstrous, slightly cutesy beastie. All right, now you're going this way. There you go, see? That's how you do it. All right, so I need to grab onto this. But now I need you up there. Go on, up you go, up you go. Get on, get on up, get up, get on up. There you go, see, now there's fluid up there. Although, I'm still not entirely convinced that I'm actually doing this right. <laughs> yeah, it's really sad that they didn't put in the, the whole backpack mechanics quite early on in the game, because I feel like if I don't show you this, it's not an honest first impression. And it's not a tutorial, it's just they go straight into the game, but they introduce what seems to be one of the main mechanics a lot later on. Hmm. So, there is now water there, the question is why? Why do we have... Or is it just a case that we need four fluoros? Is that... is that... It is, is it as simple as that? Am I once again overthinking things? Possibly. Maybe we just need another fluoro. And get four of them, then we can have all four buttons open at the same time, and then wonderful things will happen, right? That might work. I guess we'll give it a shot. That, get, get off there! <laughs> He's taking away all the control of my creations. I can't trust him. He's a sneaky little bugger. Alright, you, you go and press that button. There you go. You've got something to do. They still seem to be rather bored. They're bouncing around all over the place. Ah! T get off my head! <sighs> He's gonna die now, isn't he? I have a corpse on my face. This is grim. Grim dark. It's kind of annoying that the fluids just break when they hit you. It's like, what use would these guys be in terms of operating machinery if they break at the slightest touch? I have to wonder. All right, let's get one more fluoro out, and I'm just going to get the hell out of the way. And then hopefully, by pulling and swinging on this thing, something good will happen. There you go, all the way. That's it. Yep, I completely over... <laughs> completely overthinking it. It's a lock system, clearly. It's like you have to fill up one and then raise the other. No, no, you just open all four. This is what's wrong with my mind, ladies and gents. Good lord. It's definitely an intriguing game, though. The fluid physics seem very, very interesting and have a lot of intriguing possibilities for future puzzles. It's a good-looking game. It's well-presented. I say, weak on the animation standpoint, at least for some stuff. Very much a mixed bag here. But I think it's certainly something that you should be having a look at if this kind of game <laughs> intrigues you. It is just a straight-up puzzle platformer with some interesting ideas behind it. This whole fluid physics system seems to work quite well. The water flows in a weird way. It's like it flows like gel, and I assume that that is actually deliberate. Now I've got to figure out what the hell I'm doing from here. <laughs> Lord knows. Mm, we can move this along a bit. Let us fill up this and see what happens. Let me guess. Fill that up. And then possibly open this, maybe? that to turn around. Okay. And that leaves that open. So don't activate that anymore. I need to ride this over to the other side. There we go. And then problems will be solved. What the use of wonderful water? Alright. Open up. Let me through. No. Don't screw around. Thank you very much. It is a satisfying game, certainly. The, the puzzles are well constructed from what I can see. The game is also being distributed with an interesting business model. I mean, this, is not, this is not new, but it's good for consumers because it's a $15 game regardless of where you are, as far as I can tell. And I think the launch price is about 10% off, so it's $13.49. You can buy direct from their site, and it'll also give you a Steam key as well as a DRM-free version. So... Unless Steam offers a really significant discount when this game is supposed to come out today, by the way, or depending on when you see this video, it came out yesterday. <laughs> it was first of March, one way or the other. It might be cheaper to buy it on the site, and even if it's the same price, it's best to kind of buy it on the site anyway, because you get a DRM-free version, so you can use it with Steam or without, depending on what you prefer. 
But certainly for what I've seen, it's very interesting. It is kind of a shame that the backpack mechanics aren't brought in until much later on, from what I can see, which means that I can't really show them to you. So maybe I put it in a mailbox in future, and then I can give you some more final thoughts. But at the end of the day, it is a first impressions, and... If there is valuable gameplay that isn't tutorial based at the start of a game, you can't really justify skipping it for a first impressions video as far as I'm concerned. If th this is what the start of the game is like, then this is what I've got to show you. But what I've seen is very interesting and I would recommend having a look at it. It looks like there's also gonna be a demo available of this game on Steam, so you can try it before ye buy. My name's been Total Biscuit, taking a look at Strange Loops Vessel. I'll see you next time.